Yes, guys, we're back for the Fulham career mode. We've got episode 23 or something like that. I don't really know, but we're on to uh, our third season, our second season in the Premier League. Very exciting times. I know you can't tell it my voice because I'm boring, but I mean, we've got very exciting times. We've got new season. We've got a new transfer budget. We're just looking through our team at the moment, trying to decide what to um, do with all the players. There's a lot of players whose contracts need redoing and reworking, so... Um, I'm just going through that at the moment, but there's a lot of players I want to sell in the team. Rodak is one of them. Because I like him as a... Oh, I say I like him. He's, he's all right. He's he's like, a, he's like a four out of ten, which is probably good for keepers on FIFA. So, um, I did like him halfway through last season. Then he turned shit and I just thought, yeah, I'm getting rid. I'm not having him in my team anymore. So, uh, we did sign Siriga and Siriga's our new backup goalkeeper. He's got a lot of experience as well, so he's good for the rest of the team. But... Um, look to the team do all the contracts because then if we do someone's contract and they need to get like extra year or two on the contract then can't really complain about just getting rid of them because I get a bit more money for them so Zambran Key tried to actually negotiate because I can't I can't scope a contract with him I'd be absolutely devoted if I lost Zambran Gita. trying to time down to a four year deal and that's what he deserves to be fair he's been absolutely fantastic in the save very very talented player in real life very very good player and um I don't know why they've loaned him out to Napoli, you know. I guess he might might not want to play championship football, but he did play three games at the start of the season. So, um, I'd back in time down for another four years. Probably the best player in the team, best midfielder in the team. Um, also, Carvalho, who was on loan last season. I think it might have been Leeds, you know, on loan out. And um, he actually scored against us, so that was fantastic. So, um, we do offer him a new contract because he's, he's a player like we're looking to the future for. How long are you the series for? If I do it for another two seasons or something like that, then he will still be in the team. So, um, I've just had a look through the team. Henry Mellor's absolutely fantastic, by the way. He's worth a lot of money now, 60-something million. And uh, Ricky J. Jones, you can see he's gone up by six overall since we loaned him out to Mines. He must be doing all right in the Bundesliga or Bundesliga 2. So, uh, we're quite happy about that. But as we've seen, Moon is going on loan in the transfer window when it starts to uh, Latium, also called Lazio. We have a quick look at the board expectations. Want to improve the squad without changing the core players and values of the squad. Um, and we're really looking for a top 10 finish. Or even a top 8. Or even a top 6. I think they're being a little bit optimistic with that. Um, Europe is our ultimate target, obviously. But I think in the space of two seasons of the Premier League, it's a bit of a unrealistic ask. But we need to try and pick up some bargains as... Oh, yeah, because we've got no budget. I've, I've, I've got to say, by the way, we've got a £30 million budget. And uh, we want to make use of our youth system and try and win a cup because we haven't won any silverware yet. But, I mean, those objectives. I know I've made them, obviously. I'm just try I'm not trying to break the fourth wall, but they're very unrealistic objectives, to be honest. And I thought, you know what? Not a bad idea. I'd love to do this whole um, challenge series nonsense where you do, like, 50 press-ups or something like that if you get one of them wrong. But I just don't really... Don't really know how to record stuff like that. I'd, I'd have to use a camera, wouldn't I? Something like that. I can't just use the um, voiceover system, which Premier Pro's got. So um, we do go into our first sign of the transfer window. It's a very, very good one as well. I'm surprised we've got him a free agent. Why would Bergamo Calcio not do this man's contract? Hans Hatterbo, he's got a fantastic name, hasn't he? I'd love a name like that. My name is so basic and boring. And English. His is just very classy name. But we do sign him. 70 grand a week, four-year contract. Can't really go wrong with that, can you? Very good signing. Then we're looking for a new signing in Kareem the Dream Benzema. Really excited about this one. Not that you can tell again. 35 uh, years old, 83 rated, two-year contract. Absolutely legendary forward. Fantastic player in his prime. I think he's going through his prime in real life now, to be honest. Absolute world-class player. And I'm very, very happy that we've managed to tie him down. Do a two-year deal, because we don't want any more, really. We had Cavani for a year. Cavani was okay. But I feel like Benzema's probably going to be a bit better. You'd hope so with his stats and rating difference. So, um, we do just try and finish off the rest of the pre-season tournament. We have won in the last two years in a row. So, obviously, it's a bit harder now. And, um, unfortunately, we lose our penalties. Uh, but still, it's, it's not too bad. We got a bit of extra money out of it. And uh, we see offers to loan our players out, and we're trying to lo loan out Jay Stansfield, and we're just selling a few other players because we, we don't need him. And um, as we go straight into the other transfers, because I, I sort of did a really, really shit edit then, 
And um, we get a big offer for Zambwangi, so 50 million. I'm not going to sell him, though. And then we try and negotiate for Rodak because they've offered his actual valuation. And I want a little bit more. I want about 10 and a half million to sell Rodak. I think that's a fair amount to say he's a Premier League goalkeeper. 78 rated, obviously, as well. He's only 26. He can always get better. And um, they just settled on 9.5 million. And I, I, I thought I'd get a few negotiations out of him. I asked for 9.7 and said no. What a prick. I don't like him anyway. Don't like him. Right, not bad. But uh, we do accept the offer of Terence Congolo because, he's, again, he's been all right for us, but we don't need him. We don't need him at all. Um, I mean, we've got a good team anyway, but we don't need Terence Congolo. So we skip ahead a bit more into the future. I don't like playing preseason games, so I apologise for that, but I really don't like it. Have a look at our uh, offers we've got for transfers, and we do have a 9.5 bid for Rodak, and I can just accept it. I'm, I'm trying to get him off the books. I can bring in a new goalkeeper and um, hopefully change it. So this is what we're looking at. We'll, these are the new goalkeepers we're looking at. We're going to start with Pickford. I don't know why the Seagulls in the background. I don't know where we are. I'm pretty sure Fulham is in London. I'm pretty 100% on that, but you know, that's FIFA for you. And they're asking for Benzema as an exchange deal, and I was really tempted to, but I thought, I've just signed him. I'm trying to make it realistic. I'm not trying to sign like ridiculous signings. Like, I guess Benzema is a bit of a weird signing for us, really. But um, I don't think it's a bad one, but Everton are playing some right hardball trying to get Bickford. Benitez has been a right knobhead, so I went, you know what, you've travelled all this way, I'm going to send you home. I'm not having you tell me what I can and can't do. So, um, a bit disappointed about that. Again, not really much I can do. I'm really interested in Ramsdale, to be honest. I've just scouted him. I've um, sent them scouts, them pre-season games. And um, I just thought, we don't have enough money for Henderson. He's already worth like 30 million, 33 million. And we've only got 38. And we won't be able to afford him. But Ramsdale's 21 million. So, um, again, they're asking for Tanganga. Why would, I, why would I sell my best defender? What are you on about? Negotiating like Wenger did. But they're asking for 29. I'm, I'm honestly, I try and budge them down. It's just so difficult to negotiate with the AI. The, the AI negotiating system is as broken as this actual game is. So, um, just have to proper negotiate and proper try and get them to uh, agree with you. So, 27.5 million is not bad for Ramsdale. Their new first choice goalkeeper freaking time down to a contract. Um, important team role. I don't know why I don't want a crucial one because he's better than Sirigu. He's a cracking keeper in real life, obviously. I think they underrated him by giving him a 74 at the start of the save, but I mean, it'll be a good signing for us. 60 grand a week, a million pound signing on fee as customary. And uh, we've got our second or oh, third sign of the transfer window. And we do go straight into another one, apparently. We're trying to sell Kenny Tete to AC Milan. 19.8 million pound, and they do it straight away. Look at that, an actual negotiation which worked properly. So um, can't really complain about that. I don't know if you can make out, you can see that we've got the England manager's job. I didn't even realise that until I rewatched the video back. That's fun to know, and we can always work on that and have a look at that in the future. But we're just having a look randomly through centre backs, and we came across this guy, yeah, 18 years old, five star week fat. I thought, you know what, he looks alright. He's got like 97 to 99 strength, which is ridiculous for an 18 year old, I just want to say. Like an Olympic powerlifting champion. He asked for an important first team role, and I'm thinking, alright, maybe he's, maybe he's alright. He's not trying to uh, con me out of some money. Like that, what's he called? That one he's played for Southampton. He played uh, Ali Deer, yeah, yeah. No, Ali Deer, that's really offensive. I think he's the. Is it Ali Deer? I don't have a clue, but you know what I mean. And we do sign him. We, we signed Ramos, the, the regen of Thiago Silva, I can imagine. 18 years old, 80 rated. Absolutely fantastic sign and a free contract. That's a, that's a world class wonder kid, that is. Bit of alliteration for you there, sort of alliteration. I know it's not full on alliteration, but it's not bad. So we do sign him and uh, we do go into our first pre. pre Game, I can't even speak. Pre-game press conference. Jesus Christ, I've got a mental block this morning. Um, we do, we do, we do have a first press conference, and we uh, talk about Ramos in it, and we lo do look into the first game of the season against West Ham United at the Cottage. So, um, very excited for this. We've got the Tifo in the background. I have no idea who it is. I cannot tell from here. Number fifteen. I don't know. But um, we do have a very, very exciting game at the Cottage, and I, I love games like this. Another London derby. Uh, we have a, two players making their first starts of the team. We have Blanco and Zambangisa in the midfield, with Wilson and Meller as usual, and Sadiq and Mitrovic leading the line. But Ramsdale and Hatabo have a really big task. 
to replace, um, well, no one played right back last season, it was just a bit of a mixed bag. Ramsdale replacing Sirigu should be good to see. And very early on, he makes a very good save. High to his left-hand side, I believe from Vlasic. And uh, from the following corner, we do try and get the ball out and Ramsdale manages to collect the ball very comfortably from the header. But then from then, we do start a quick counter Look at the football on this. Absolutely fast-flowing, quick-paced, beautiful football from us. Wilson has an effort. It's a good save from Leno. Very good save from the former Arsenal by Leverkusen, number one. Should Wilson score? Wilson doesn't score enough. That's the problem with Wilson, I'm not going to lie. Does not score enough. But from the resulting corner, Wilson crosses the ball and we're looking for Big Mitrovic. So he nearly scored that. That was... Um, I don't know about spectacular, but it was it was special at least. With the 19th minute, we lose the ball somehow. This game is so broken with its animations. Like that one again. What is it doing? Avia has a good effort and Ramsdale makes a very, very good save. Again to his left-hand side. It's a good save from the uh, future England number one. And they do get a corner from it. But this time Ramsdale does easily claim and takes the pressure off his defence. Well, the first half does end at nil-nil and... Not bad, not bad. I don't know my voice today, but not bad. We do all right. But in the 48th minute, Sadiq breaking at speed past Issa Diop, making him look like a 39-year-old veteran. For another good save from Leno. Good effort from Sadiq and me talking to Sirigu, my best mate on the touchline. He's, he's like an unlucky boss. But in the 65th, Vlasic goes through. It's another decent save from Ramsdale. Does a good job at keeping it out. And uh, we do have to make some changes in the 72nd minute. Ben Kennedy came on apparently and so did Benzema for his first game but Kennedy whips the ball in Mitrovic nearly gets his end on it it's a good effort from Hatterboa he rebounds on his weak foot what a finish from Hatterboa his first goal for the club probably his only goal all season I don't know why he's up there I think I went ultra attacking and he's just managed to go up front so um, a very very good team move Mitrovic was so unlucky it's a good save again from Leno he's fantastic he's horrible to play against plays so well all the time and Hatterbo gets his first goal for the club and the first goal of the season for us. In the 93rd minute, Mello goes to and he really should score. It's another good save by Leno. As uh, West Ham try and scramble the ball away. Sessignon gets the ball. I'm going to shoot. I'm really tempted to. Play the ball to Mitrovic, who's tackled, and Leno clears it again. But honestly, like if we can get this win, it's absolutely fantastic. And look at that from an effort from Alexander Mitrovic. What was that? Oh my God, that is the shittest attempt on goal I think I've ever seen in my life. From the top scorer in the Premier League last season, he does that. Absolutely embarrassing from Mitrovic. Very, very, very poor. But um, we do get the 1-0 win. We are very happy with the win. And um, there's not much we can really say about it. I just think it was a very good team performance. It's like a bit of a real press conference, isn't it? Yeah, good 1-0 win. And um, just good to see him. We go straight into the second game. We uh, we do find Chelsea warming up. Look at their players. That one of their players has had more than five of ours. That's just how it goes at Chelsea, isn't it? To be honest, they've got all these players who are world class talents. And um, look at us passing ball around. We look we look shit, don't we? Look at Sadiq on his weak foot. What a a, a a big lump of potatoes he is sometimes when he's turning. We do go into the second game of the episode and the final game of the episode against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. What a stadium this is as well. Not the nice one in London. The nice one in London is the Fulham Stadium. Do you see the team on the screen again? We've got Ramsdale, Hatterboa, Tanganga, Ramos and Guevara as the defence. Sessing and Anguish as the midfield. Kennedy and Miller as the attacking midfielders and Wilson drop into the bench. And Sadiq and Mitrovic as the strikers as usual. So um, another game for uh, Hatterboa and Ramsdale. And another debut for Ramos. Ramsdale giving the team talk apparently as well. So that's realistic. A new player giving the team talk for his new team. But we do focus on Big Rom there, and I'll tell you what, he's going to be a big feature point in this episode, a big feature point. Early in the game, Havertz goes through, and what a save that is from Ramsdale. I've never had a keeper who saves shots, you know. I mean, Sirigu, but I don't want to slate Sirigu. I do like Sirigu. I'd sign him on any career I'd ever do. But um, there's a good save from Ramsdale. Another one shortly follows. I think he, could, he should catch this, and he could catch this. But um, nonetheless, he does go for another, another corner. And Chelsea trying to play the short game. They draw a defence out. They cross the ball and look at this. I couldn't change to anyone. And Ramsdale's very unfortunate for it not to be saved. And Lukaku scores again. I hate it sometimes. I changed to Gavardi. I wanted to change to Ramos. And this game's just broken. It's position changing is so shit. It's not even funny. 
and we do go behind to Big Rom and the Chelsea boys. But we don't have a shot in the first half and we try and get an attempt on goal and honestly, I was so frustrated. I was so, like, they're just playing the ball out and as soon as I get a chance on goal, they blow the fucking whistle. Like, what even is that? It's so frustrating, but we are one of down at half-time. The 50th minute, Sadiq, well, he runs to it. It's a good ball from Session Gun and he really should score and he puts it wide. That's the problem with Sadiq. He's finishing so, so poor sometimes. So, so poor and um, he should score. It shows a reaper. That's how bad it was. But then Chelsea go on and attack Romero Lukaku just runs straight through on goal. It's so poor. And I thought, immediate goal. And look at this from a save from Aaron Ramsdale. What a save. No wonder, no wonder Ben Foster rates him so highly. But Chelsea are still continuing with the attack. Play some all right football. They get really lucky. And Sessignon does manage to uh, intercept. We do play another through ball to Sadiq. He runs to on goal again. Rudiger cannot keep up with him. A bit realistic, to be honest. And he should score again. And he puts it wide. Very, very unlucky from us. And uh, he does come off after that's his last action in the game. They bring on Di Maria and we bring on Demir and Blanco. But in the 67th minute, sort of from the kickoff, Lukaku goes to on his weak foot and he just, he just twats it past Ramadale. We go 2-0 down. There's not much I can do about that, to be honest. There's not much I can do at all. And um, we're just a bit unlucky. We're very unlucky in this game. And we do go 2-0 down. We do have Blanco actually making an impact in the midfield. Uh, because no one else does. Sessignon's very poor at running with the ball. We do play some nice football. Look at this, it's just straight from a, a corner or straight from a goal kick and Mitrovic makes it 2-1. Another goal for Mitrovic in the season. And the captain tries to recover the game for us as um, in the second half we're actually quite good and we should have we should have probably beat by second half standards but Sadiq sort of cost us the game. The 86th minute, look at this from Mella. He absolutely weaves past Biliqueta and Rudiger. Not saying much. I know they're good in real life but they're slow. And he really unlucky not to really unlucky not to score there. As I believe it's Thiago Silva comes across and makes a very, very vital interception. And uh, from the resulting corner, Mitrovic tries to win the header. Mitrovic can't score in the Premier League. A header anyway. I mean, he can score, but he can't score a header. The ball comes out to Meller again. And he hits one end to Johnston, makes another good save. And uh, Chelsea finally clear the ball out. But it does result in a loss for us. And it's very, very unfortunate. A 2-1 loss against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Lukaku with a double. Can't really do much about it, to be honest. It's just a disappointing result. We do want to challenge Chelsea this season in the rest of the league, but we were unlucky not to get anything out of that second half. They had 2.9 expected goals, we had two. You can see Mitrovic was our best player on the on the, on the the team. Ramsdale had a decent game. Ramos was very good, to be honest. I know he got done for that Lukaku chance where he played it across to Havertz. Still very unlucky. And uh, not much I could do about that, but Johnson got a 6.2, so he didn't carry a team for a change. And we're just unlucky, to be honest. It's a, it's a shame we couldn't get anything out of it. But we didn't do bad in hindsight. And we do go into the press conference. I didn't want to do it, but I thought, you know what? I'm not padding episodes, by the way. I'm ju I just like breaking down the momentum of the episodes. So it's not just all big one blob. I mean, you might think that anyway, but I just try and break them down a little bit. And um, press conference is just about Lukaku. He's so annoying to play against. And we did let him play. We did let him play. I was really, I was really shit at defending this game, like most games. But we do finish the um, episode and the start of the transfer special. We've got a bit more money to spend next episode. We do agree a fee for a Poku with Girona. And um, as you can see, Tete Salt have got a bit more money in the bank. We have a look at our uh, funds. We've got £38 million to spend next episode. That could be very promising. And um, I think I don't think I need any defenders. I think it's a new attacker I'm looking for. Wilson's not really playing well. Sadiq's been poor at the start of the season. I think I might need it. But we do go into the uh, next episode. We've got an away game against Newport in the Cup, a home game against Wolves, which should be good. Then we've got an away game against Burnley at Turf Moor. We've got a home game against Forest at the Cottage. Then an away game against Arsenal at the Emirates. So I really appreciate you watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. And I will definitely catch you in the next video. Thank you very much. Cheers.